It's been a privilege. One of the things in the last year or so, Mike and I sort of found each other on a Friday morning, mostly on Zoom, um, but when we've been able to at his house and just we've spent time praying together. And just literally, I said to him, can I pray with you? Let's pray. And uh, God's just been blessing us together. And I said to him, I'd love you to just come and share your heart. So you all know Mike well. Let's just welcome Mike as he shares. Good morning. It's good to be here. It's good to see so many old and familiar and new faces. I, I, I just want to encourage you, particularly those that are regulars with the Apex, part of the Apex Church, that we're really blessed. We are really blessed. Um, as a church, we've got so many good people, so many. I just want to say thanks, Steve, for fitting that song in. That last song that we sang, I think it's a hill song, uh, praise the name of the Lord our God. That means such a lot to me and Jill. Well, we've got one of the blessings in the church is that we've got so many good and capable speakers who have actually spoken, and quite a few that haven't. Um, You know, we've got Mark, Paul, Ashley, Donna, Greg, Simon, to name but a few. And uh, I was really blessed and surprised and severely challenged when Mark suggested that I speak um, and, and share my heart. Well, my heart is for the church, the Apex Church, and the wider church, but this is my family. This is my family. And when I looked at that little list of names of those that have spoken, and there are others that could speak, I thought, Mike, you know, you've done all that. You've been there. You've got the T-shirt. You've got rotten apples thrown at you occasionally. You know, and... And I felt God say really clearly to me, which has already been said by at least two people this morning, Mike, be yourself and don't compare. Because comparing can be a trap. When we compare each other and think, oh, gosh, I wish I could run my family the way they're organised. These kids never squeak. (laughs) They're amazing. Until they get out, of course. <laughs> but they are fantastic. You know what I mean? It's, you know, you, you look at some and say, oh, I wish I, could, I wish I could do it that way. But, you know, you are unique, each one of you. You are so special that when God created you, he threw the mould away. And there's never, ever going to be a, another Rob or Fred or James or whoever it's going to be. We are wonderfully and uniquely and individually made. And that is such a great blessing to know. And it can be a release. It it set me free to be myself. And uh, uh, part of the um, be, be being filled with the spirit theme is finding out about ourselves as a church and where do we fit and how do we fit. Look, we're a bunch You know, you think this is God's kingdom. This is God's church. We are all God's anointed. Now, this is this is this is fact. It's not fiction. And we we need to to understand that we all fit. We all fit. Don't compare yourself with somebody else because, boy, you are unique. And it is a trap if you do that. It will tie you down. And uh, that's, that's, not, that's not really good. Well, this life in the spirit, um, it, 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 there's always consequences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Always. That hopefully, they're all positive. Um, and uh, you know, there are, um, I just want to get... John, could we have that first slide up, please? Right, can you read that, OK? Let us consider... And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting 
to meet together, as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. That is when Jesus comes back. Now that is a brilliant, encouraging verse of Scripture for us all, that we need to meet together. And I don't know about you, but I need that. I need to be stirred up to meet together and to get involved in good works and all the rest of it. But 18 months ago, roughly, Emperor Boris and his centurions sent a decree out to the, to the nation that we would be locked down and that we couldn't meet together. And at first, I was furious. I was really furious and frustrated. Thinking, this is the enemy, he's going to win. What a horrible ploy. You know, all this sort of stuff. Um, but of course, um, God knew. God knew all about it. And I found that when my attitude changed, when my anger turned to um, something of understanding the knowledge of God's word, it changed my heart towards it and changes your attitude, doesn't it? Have you felt that when you've been challenged by somebody and you know really that your reaction is not necessarily right, um, but then God somehow steps in through the Holy Spirit and you, th you get this other perspective and you think, wow, wow, that's right, Lord. Um, you know, God put our government in control, whether we like it or not, and we are encouraged and told to pray for them. Pray for those in authority over you, it says. And, and that hit me like a train. And I thought, I'm not praying for it. But, of course, you get round to it. I need a bit of persuading sometimes because I'm a bit stubborn. Um, so sorry about that, Lord. But it, it, it's, it's true. And uh, I, I, I really, you know, God changes your heart. It changes your attitude towards things and people and situations. And uh, it's been a great blessing to many. Um, Zoom has been a great blessing to many. Personally, I'm not a Zoomer. I would prefer to Zoom off to another planet rather than Zoom. But it is, a great, it is a great tool for people communicating and talking together. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. You know, it's just, that's just my... We've, we've all got a little soapbox, haven't we, now and again? And... <laughs> Well, I have got a few, but that, that Zoom, Zoom is not one of my favourite, but I'm, it was better, it is better than nothing, where people can see each other, albeit they all talk together at the same time sometimes, and it sounds a bit, bit difficult to follow. But God really stirred me up in that, in, in, in this uh, decree from, from Emperor Boris. But... Um, you know, I got through it and I realised that, you know, God's in this. God knows, doesn't he? He knew there was going to be this pandemic, this horrible disease. And uh, he, he certainly turned a lot of his people most of the time to turn into him more and more and more and saying, Lord, help me. Give us, show us mercy. And, and the church, you, you hear great stories about the church growing. Um, and in a strange way, the lockdowns have more pluses than negatives. Um, and, you know, we've got the vaccine. Um, we really need to pray for wisdom for the government for this final decision they're going to make. Um, it's tomorrow, isn't it? It's uh, D-Day, as it were. And people are calling it the Freedom Day. Well, I'd rather not go into uh, out of lockdown for another month or so if that means that we haven't got to go back into it three or four months down the road and we've got to go through it all again. But we do really need to pray for, for uh, the, the government. Um, I, th I think it's, it's so important because in that, when we pray for, for, for the government of our land, of our nation, whether we like it or not, we're honouring them, but we're also honouring God because he put them there in the first place. And sometimes... I forget that, and you think, gosh, Lord, you're so patient and gracious with me. But, um, I like, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Could we have the next slide, John? <coughs> this would be interesting. Pardon? 
Yeah, what does, yeah sorry. This, this, this truth thing um, really got to me when I was, when I was trying to prepare for this. Um, because uh, I like a program. Now, I'm going to confess, sorry about this, but I like a program called Would I Lie to You? Anybody else like it? Go on, come, admit. Oh, good. We've got a handful of... Oh, almost. Well, yeah, so just, just a handful of people. Now, I just, I just like the stories. For those, who has never watched it? That's, oh, gosh, you're really missing something. No, you're sensible. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad that uh, some have never watched it because it's just two teams of, and I don't like this word, celebrities or whatever, um, who, and each one of them tells a story about what happened to them and the opposite team question them and at the end of the, the, the a certain time or whatever they have to say whether they think it's a true or a lie and I love it I absolutely get a good feeling and love it when somebody's told a really outrageous story about what happened to themselves and it's absolutely true I think, yes, you know, we've got it, telling the truth. I mean, I, any, now another confession, anybody else apart from Jill and I watch Bargain Hunt? I know some of you were, oh, good, there's a few more, a few more sensible people. <laughs> I look at things and think, oh, that's worth, that pulpit's worth about 50 quid now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> But in Bargain Hunt, there's an antique dealer, um, an expert, and his name's Raj Bizram. He's, uh, he's quite a character. And he was on Would I Lie to You? And he said um, that um, him and his mate used to get up to all sorts of pranks. And uh, he had an old banger car, and he strapped, tied a couple of skis to the roof on his roof, roof rack, on his banger, banger car, and he climbed up via a ladder on the top of the roof, clipped his feet to the, to the skis, and got a couple of ski poles, and his mate drove him around the village where they lived, and he was going like this <laughs> off the top. I mean, absolutely ridiculous story, but it was, he said it was absolutely true. So you might, you know, it's, uh, that is why I... I like sometimes the outrageous things that people say, which absolutely are actually very, very true and did happen to them. Now, Jesus, 70 times in the gospel said, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. In John's gospel alone, he said it 24 times. He tells the truth. He has never, he doesn't even think about telling a lie. He's never told a lie. Now, you know, and I thought, well, this is one of the things that, that made me, persuaded me to, to become a Christian and to, and, and to follow Jesus. Because for 2,000 years, think about it, millions and billions of trillions of people that believe in Jesus, they all can't be wrong. That's the way I think about it. all that number, that huge number throughout 2,000 years of history and all that's gone on. They, they, they still believe in Jesus. And I thought, well, that's, that's good enough for me. Well, what, that was one of the reasons. And, uh, you know, Jesus always, always told the truth. And um, no question, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? And we believe some incredible truths. You know, I mean, what drama. Yesterday on the football field when Christian Eriksen, you know, collapses, just boom, gone down like a spat, sack of spuds. They're doing CPR. His teammates are in tears. They're praying, obviously, a lot of them. They were praying. They, they, were, they were almost close to tears in, in the studio. Um, and, you know, all around, it was, hot. it was so stressful to watch. We were praying for him. You know, you, your initial reaction is, Lord, Lord, do something. As Paul prayed this morning, Jesus is a winner. And thank to the glory of God, Christian Erickson is obviously in recovery now stabilized 
But, you know, I thought, what a miracle. And the headlines in the papers, some of the papers this morning, it's, it's a miracle. He's back. He's back. You know, he had a brush with, with death, certainly. And uh, you know, God gets all the glory for that. All the glory. And uh, I, I, just, I just love the, the fact that we, you know, we believe 100%, a million percent, if that's possible, that the, the things that Jesus spoke about, the things he did, were true. But the thing that blows your mind is what he said to us, greater things than these shall you do. Wow. You know? But it's true. I think Lord, the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in these times of, of praying... We are, do you know what, you know what are the, one of the most common, common, and I mean that in a nice word, uh, prayers that the church has prayed in prayer meetings on Zoom and out of Zoom is more Lord, more Lord. Uh, and, 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 and God's going to give us more. But I, I, I just was thinking about what does that mean? What does more Lord mean for me? And, 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 and and God, I felt God say to me, look, look, you know, take responsibility a bit more for what you do. Take a bit more responsibility. Do something which perhaps you haven't done before. Um, and, and, and God, you will see what God will do with, with you and, and through you. Um, when we first became Christians, Jill and I, um, Jill was a Christian before me. We lived on the Mountbatten Avenue, Crossfield Avenue estate, and we had some friends. They were really good friends, and both of them became Christians. And the, and the, the more in their lives was that between them, they used to smoke 60 a day. <coughs> and the guy in, in, the, uh, in the marriage um, took all these cigarettes that they hadn't smoked because they used to stock up. He took them back to Rashley's and got a refund. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you think, wow, that was the work of the Holy Spirit. That was something positive and more in his life that he'd done that um, he was quite happy not to, to ignore. Um, <clears throat> when I first became filled with the Holy Spirit, um, I don't think I was even praying for more, but I certainly got more big time. And um, the first thing that God did, it was a sign uh, for me. Um, he cleaned up my language. I was in engineering uh, over at Westlands, and um, I think Do yeah, Doe's worked there for a time. But, you know, the language was very, very ripe. And, and um, I was sort of one of, one of the uh, main culprits. And it was awful. But once I'd become a Christian, once the Holy Spirit had spoken to me and come on me, I didn't want to swear anymore. The, the want, the need to be one of the boys, to be, oh, well, you know, bleepity bleep, blankety blank, and all that stuff, stopped. And it wasn't long before they said, why have you stopped swearing? Of course, I was, I was able to tell them. But, uh, you know, <laughs> when we pray for more, God will give us more. And, and I think that, you know, we, more is, is expected from us. Right, what, what verse have we got up there now? I can't read it from there. One the, 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 the one another's, that's right. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to mention, uh, these, don't be frightened of these notes, because I'm not. I don't, I don't follow up on <laughs> <laughs> They're for show a lot of it, you know, look, with all the green writing and everything. <laughs> I like that, but, you know. Yeah, I'll be myself, yeah. I still need my notes. <laughs> because my memory's not, uh, not um, what it was. <clears throat> Where are we? The one and others. This is, this is a good church for one another's because we can all be involved in it. We can all be involved in, in one anothering one another. And the way to do that, really, there's only one way to do it really practically is through house groups or home groups or cell groups or call them what you are, but they are groups. 
And we have got, and I'm not plugging this, but we've got one of the best groups in the church. <laughs> Sorry. It's because we've got, we've, got we've got a few good men and women. No, it's, 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 it's great. Um, they're prepared to, to um, take a Bible study um, and bring something of, of what they see and hear of God. And uh, it's, it's a real sense of being, being together in a church and functioning as a body. We pray for each other. Um, we try and support each other, um, even though we are restricted. Um, the most difficult thing is now where you're only allowed six from two families, is it, in one room. We, get, we, we, can, get our, um, we can get the right number of people in the room, but the rest are left on Zoom. And that's a bit difficult because you want to you want to talk to the people that you can see I can't don't you Angus you know you 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 can somehow connect in a different way <laughs> but uh, you know it, the they are good and uh, we we would we would and I know Ashley and Mark um, love house groups they love that's that's the place where you can begin to unload if necessary you can begin to learn from each other. All these different speakers I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we can learn from them. We don't have to copy them, but some of the stuff that they bring to us is, is important, and we need to hear it. So, so we, we, we learn from one another. And, 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 and there's a whole long list of one another's here, which I'm not going to attempt to go through, which is there are 13 that there, and they all relate to being um, in unity there's there's 13 there there's there's um humility um there's was four there there's six there and and there's the rest and all the all of these are geared for for the church the one another's and uh it's something that we have to work on because i think when we pray for more lord god god wants us to to um um, what's the word? Concentrate on what more can I do? Sometimes you can't do any more than you're doing. Don't get hung up and don't get on the law. You know, you might, you might be doing four or five different things for different people. And it's hard work, especially when you're getting as young as we are. And um, you, you, you sort of think, well, is this worth it? Of course it's worth it. This is the kingdom of God we're talking about, church. You know, you're, you're all anointed, as I said. You know, you, you've all got the Spirit of God living in you. The same Spirit that Jesus rose, it rose from the dead. I can't get my head around it, can you? You do sometimes get little glimpses, don't you? You do get little glimpses. But a house group is a good place to get true friendship and real friendship, more than the acquaintance. How are you doing? You know, how are you doing? What, what, what's, you know, you don't get... You don't get perhaps the the um, what's the word the the comfort of being able to to unload something and you know being in the spirit means that God puts His finger on stuff in your life that perhaps you, it might be the elephant in the room. One of the elephants I had, and I've got several, but they're, they're, it was a herd. But most of them have cleared up now. <laughs> was was um, was rejection. You know, I was adopted. And I could never understand why my biological mother wanted to give me away. And that took me until I was in my 40s via a social worker because my biological mother was living in Ryde at the time. And we went down, Jill and I went in the car and we, I don't know if we happened, but we found her address. We did it all wrong. We found her address. I said to Jill, go out the car, knock on the door and... If she comes, all I want to do is see her once, and that, that will satisfy me. So Jill went and knocked on the door, and somebody came to the house, and we said, oh, is, are you so-and-so, or is, is Mrs... I can't remember her name now, even. Ridiculous. But she said, no, she's at bingo. So Jill came back, we got in the car, and I drove away. I, I had this, this yearning in my heart, this this pain, this ache. I just want to see her once, Lord. And, and I was a Christian, um, you know, hopefully going on with God and, and all the rest of it. But this, 
this was the elephant in the room for me, this, this rejection of why, why, why. Anyway, I did, went the official route and got a lovely social worker. She was, she was great. Um, and she wrote a, a, a letter to my, to my biological mum, um, explained the situation. Um, would she be happy to, to meet? Um, uh, you know, just, just to say hello, just to introduce me. And um, she got a letter back saying, basically, she didn't want to know. She didn't want to know. And I thought about this. I brought it to, before God. I was all over the place emotionally, and this was affecting me. It was affecting our marriage and lots of other stuff that was going on, which was not good. I was pretty volatile. Um, but it was all... This elephant in the room in my life was the rejection. And... Uh, We'd come so far, and God said to me when I was arguing with him and shouting and screaming and crying, Lord, the Lord said to me, Mike, you've got to honour her, and I will honour you. Forgive her, and I will forgive you. That did it. It was done. I knew exactly what I had to do in my heart, which I did, and I was free. I was set free from that completely. And uh, you know, rejection can be a big, a big problem for some people. Um, and um, I know it, it manifests itself in so, many day, in, in so many ways. But I was just, just so relieved. And from that moment on, I can talk about adoption. I can see programs about it. Now, I've still got a scar, but it's not an open wound. And there is a big difference. Because an open wound, you can get an infection. And that's where the enemy really comes in and almost tries to destroy you. But a scar, that's, that reminds me of healing. It reminds me of the work that God did. You know, he can do the same for you. If that is a problem with you for rejection, then please don't, don't sit on it any longer. Um, speak to Mark or Ashley and they'll, they'll um, help you to... Um, Work it through. Didn't notice I didn't say me then, because I, you know, I'd rather, you know, <laughs> slopey shoulders, you know, <laughs> that prevalent. I just feel really prompted. Yes. I think your presence is the button switches are important. Okay. Why don't we pray? Just, just, just pray. Pray. Okay. Yeah. Let me just. Um... We need to come back to that. Just, just pray yeah. That now. Yeah. Okay. I'll just... Lord, if I've pressed some buttons, then there are buttons that you want pressed. I thank you that, that you love us in whatever state we're in. It might be a quiet, silent, almost secret feeling that's been eaten away at you for years. It might be something which has just suddenly popped up Oh, that's me. Lord, I, I just thank you that we've already heard this morning that you are a winner and that through the power of your Holy Spirit and your love, you can set people free. That each one of us in this room are accepted, accepted, complete, completely, Lord, as we are because of the work that you did. You took our place. You were rejected. And, Lord, you said, Father, forgive them. How could you do that? But we know you did. And we know the effect that you can have on, on men and women at this, this time and in these days. So, Lord, if that is somebody here or if there are a few buttons being pressed, Lord, keep pressing them because you're pressing them because you want to see them set free. Set free, Lord, in, in the glory of being accepted, Lord, by you for who, just how they are. We can't change our personalities. But, Lord, we thank you that you can heal us. You maybe leave a few scars, but there's no open wounds. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you're doing, Lord. So thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's put the... Um
Holy Spirit amongst the pigeons on my notes or whatever. Um, but there, that's, that's, that's good. Um, let's see, John. Um, how are we doing for time? Are, we, we're all right. are you still with me? Or are you, do you want to go and watch the cricket? A, no, you won't want to watch the cricket. It's not going very well. It's probably all over by now. <laughs> um, just keep going. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not um, trying to play for time or anything. Um, I, I just. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick pick out one or two other things. Um, we are the body, right? Now, there are different shaped limbs, as you probably noticed in the body. And some of those limbs, as you get older and creak a bit more, and they ache. And they're, they're really quite painful at times. But um, I'm not talking about you guys, although if the cat flips, you can wear that. <laughs> because we are all individuals, and we can all sometimes say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing. But well, that's okay. You know, if, if, if you need to, you know, confess, it says confess your sins to one another. Now, that's, a bit, that's a bit scary. That really is a bit scary. But it, it's, it's meant to mean that we can be set free. And uh, I just, I just want to... Oh, I'm, I know where I'm going now. I, I know where I'm going, church, so just bear with me. Um... This more, Lord, asking God for more. What does it mean that some of us perhaps need more of to take? We need to take, and I'm not, I'm not having to go at anybody here, only myself, because I look in the mirror. And I've already mentioned it. Mike, take more responsibility. When Mark first came here, and I didn't really know him at all, um, he, he really impressed me because he said for years and years and years, he used to put chairs out in the church for years and years and years. Now, that, that is just as important in, in, in some ways as being up here every Sunday preaching. It, it is the most powerful um, thing that you can do is to serve. And when you're serving these chairs, you're serving the church and you're serving Jesus. You're serving, you know, the, the, it, you know we, you might not believe this, but, well, you do, I'm sure, because you, you, you'll, you'll nod your head. You know, we are the bride of Christ, right? Right. We we we've we are ready for the marriage. Or well, we're getting ready for the marriage. Let's put it that way. But we are. It says the bride of Christ, and we are betrothed to Christ. You know, we're waiting. It's like an engagement. You know, um, and we want to be totally and one hundred percent faithful. And we've all got a part to play in that. If we can take, um, perhaps some of us need to take more responsibility. I mean, it, it, this is a fact in the church. There are the, the doers and there's the not, the, the what? The don'ts. Oh, that's good. Do you want to come up here? <laughs> there's, well, there is, there's the doers and the not doers, if you like. There are, there are the givers and the, shall we say, the ones that would prefer to be passive. You know, you know what I'm trying to say, don't you? I'm not trying to be nasty or anything, but, but that is a fact. And we are so blessed in this church. I just want to commend you guys, all of you. The generosity in finance is unbelievable. It really brings glory to God what you do financially. And... You know, Justine, we were talking about her earlier, you know, working with the kids. I don't want to work with the kids anymore. <laughs> Not pun. <laughs> They're here. I oh, know. They're lovely. <laughs> These are all good. <laughs> Even that one asleep down there. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. <laughs> you, you know, sometimes you've bought the T-shirt, you've, you wear the sunglasses and you've got the cap. You know, you know but... We, we need to pray. As Mark, I know Mark and Jackie got a heart for the kids' work, which is, which is fantastic. And we want to support them in that and pray for them. 
and, and, and Justine's done a great job. Um, you know, but we, we need you know, to probably have one or two more workers in that that are saying, hang on, I could help. I'm not very good. I'm a bit hopeless, but I'll do what I'm told to do. Or uh, just, just I'll give it a go. You know, it's something like that. Sometimes these things develop and grow and, and uh, it's called taking responsibility. Um, and I just want to, I just want to talk um, just just a fraction about loyalty, right? Now you're okay, you two, aren't you? You're, you're, we love you. This is not nothing to do with you at all, <laughs> nothing at whatsoever. So I don't want to upset you. I'm glad I got that bit out of the way. <laughs> but I had a great a great um, definition of loyalty from. Nicky Grumble. No, not Grumble. Um, but, um, Nick, <laughs> Nicky Gumble. Sorry, Nicky. <laughs> but um, he, was, he was saying that I'm with you whether you're right or whether you're wrong. I will tell you when you might, just might, be wrong. And I will work together with you to get it right. And I, I just love that. It's, it's almost agape love, that. It, you know, the, you know, whatever you do to me, whatever you say to me, however much you hurt me, I will always love you, and I will want the, um, the... My best good is for you. And the best good of what God has got is for you. And uh, I, I just think that that, that is, that is um, a good definition of loyalty. Because... Loyalty springs, I think, from... Or disloyalty. Let's, let's think about that. Politics, just as a classic example. All the century... I mean, all the government are standing together. Um, and, oh, yes, you've got my full support. You've, you know, I'm 100%. He's a good man and all the rest of it. Or she's a good lady. And then, next day, somebody's resigned. And it seems as if this, that there's so much disloyalty and, and that excuse me must begin I think in the in the heart that um, you know it's 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 a seed that the enemy can really cash in on and um, that's not a good thing it's not a good thing I mean take a marriage now thick and thin good and bad, spots and warts and all, for 58, 58 or 59 years, 57, right, we're still together folks, <laughs> despite my terrible memory, 57 years, now during that time, there have been one or two minor downs and millions of ups. But you know what I mean. It's up and down, and we have to work at it. We, we, you know, we, 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 we are 100% committed to each other, although at times we, we drive each other up the wall in, in, a, in a nice sense. We're climbing up the wall in frustration or whatever um, because I, I can't... You, you won't believe this, but sometimes you'll think, so I tend not to listen to what she's saying to me. Does anybody else get that? <laughs> Oh, good, a few. Oh, yeah. Listen to what I say. And do you know, when she says that, I think, next time I'm going to listen to what she says. And blow me, forget all about it. <laughs> Somehow there's a, there's, a, there's a blank screen on my face. My brain is not working. And uh, you think, oh, dear. And I wonder why there's slight, slight... Um, there's heavy frustration in the room <laughs> and uh, quite often yeah you haven't heard what I've said have you and you try and get out of it don't you, you say, oh well yeah I've, just, I've got a lot on my mind I'm just thinking about the football now and, um, just, yeah I'll do that in a minute and I never do it in a minute now I do it in an hour perhaps when I remember because Jill's reminded me <laughs> but you know it's, it's just it, it, but we are 100 million percent committed to each other we are loyal to each other I and mean, I trust you with my life 
Um, you know, it's, it's, that is true loyalty. And, and we don't always agree. Gosh, what are the silence? Everybody else is all right with that, are they? <laughs> you know, dealing with disagreements can be quite interesting. Noisy and interesting. Um, but you know what I mean. We, you know, it's, it's, we're, still, we're still work in progress after 50-odd years. I've forgotten already, you see. <laughs> Seven. But, you know, the church is like that. We're full of individuals which are... To- some of us totally opposite to one another and totally wind each other up and totally, you know, and, and yet totally bless us at the same time. And, and we work at it because we are work in progress. What sort of work is it? Jesus is building his church. You know, he's not going to wait for two dozen super saints to walk through the door and Mark's going to say, all right, you lot, you're all, um, you're all on furlough. Um, I'll just work with these super saints and we'll really get this church together. No, it doesn't work like that, as you know. Of course not. It's about working together for the common good. You know, our motive, what's our motive in, in, in being here as a church? Is to, is to see cows change because this is a place where God lives through his son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the bottom line of this church. All the rest of it is... Is, is good, but, but you know, that's our motivation. That's Mark's motivation. And we don't always get things right. You know, that is a fact of life. But you know, we, we, we recoup, we recharge, and we press on. Because I want to be known for how I finished this race, not when I've begun it. 40, 50 years ago, I'm not very good with numbers, as you gathered. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's such a loyalty is you know it's an old almost an old fashioned word these days isn't it you know you don't hear too many you know us older generation you probably we understand perhaps more than the than the youngsters about about loyalty but it's it's a great it's a great asset it's a great gift we've got i mean we've got you know i mean judas i mean he was a disciple of jesus he went round with him. He saw him do miracles and everything else. Now, I know somebody had to portray Jesus. But you think, well, that is an extreme, extreme example. But it does, it does happen. You know, I mean, it, well, we're almost, I'm almost finished now. Oh, right, yeah, I've been, I've got the wind up. The sign language is... We, we, were, we were over in Australia with Liz and Steve and the family and, and Liz invited some neighbours in and one of these, I mean a lovely couple but boy this lady could talk, she was an international talker, you know she could talk for Australia and the whole of the southern hemisphere and, and we were, oh well, I was trying to keep my eyes open and she was going on and on and the middle daughter of Liz Piper came in the room and she said, time to wrap it up now. <laughs> well, I thought, thank you, Lord. <laughs> no, out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it worked. How did I get onto that? Because she's <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> There's... Yeah, there's a lot of good points here, but you're not going to get them now, so <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. You'll have to, you'll have to pick the bones out of what I said. Um, the good, bad, and the ugly of it, I expect. But um, we're in this together. I love the church. My heart is for the church. And the different shapes and sizes and characters and personalities and gifts we've got. Uh, you know, I envy some of the gifts of these musicians. I'm the world's most frustrated musician. And, and, and yet, in, in a sense, I'm there with them. I'm there with them. Um, I've got a quote here I was going to read. I'll finish with this because this is a bit of theology and it makes me, makes me feel a bit better about all the stuff I've left out. <laughs> And, and this, 
you know, this is, this is about obedience. And I haven't touched on that. It's a massive, massive subject. And uh, I can tell I'm, I'm getting tired because my voice goes up like this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, obedience in all this is something which is, is vitally important. And perhaps Mark or Paul or, or Ashley or Tom, Dick or Harry will sort of expand on this one day. But it's all, all to do with life in the spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, we, we tend to, you know, we, we can actually do a lot easier what God wants us to do and, and not battle against it. But this is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, he was, a, he was a great theologian. And he said, one act of obedience, and this is a hint for me, is better than a hundred sermons. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of truth in that, in a sense. One act of obedience is better than a hundred sermons. So there we go. I'll I'll hand you over. I'm sorry I didn't get through half my notes, but Mark, this is nice. This is the easy bit. Over to you. (laughs) Just stand as a family. Come on. Mike, Mike said that he didn't say anything theological. <laughs> the whole thing was theological in that we are the family of God. And that's what he was speaking about and talking about the different characters. Right at the beginning, he said, we all fit. And he talked about the challenges and he made us laugh There were deep silences. He was very vulnerable. Talked about wounds, that so many of us live with wounds. Some of us know about them, some of us don't. But we all fit. We've got all these different personalities and characteristics that Mike was just sharing about. We've been called to be a body. That's what he was saying, wasn't he? To, to one another, one another. But there's a challenge that was coming all the way through, and right at the end, right almost the last word, was the word obedience. See, so when we feel vulnerable, when we tend towards disloyalty, when, we, when we're passive, sometimes even passive-aggressive. All of these things, Mike, Mike was touching on them. There's a surrendering to God, just like Mike did in his own life. There's a surrendering as we surrender to the Lord, as we recognize his mercy and his grace in our lives. That causes us to respond. And Lord, today, as your body, as we've just heard this wonderful, free-ranging talk reflecting on life in the spirit, in the body of Christ. Lord, we we speak to ourselves, each one of us. We ask you for your healing, where we're wounded. Lord, for those who've responded even this morning. Lord, if there are things that we need to forgive, help us to forgive. If there are those that we need to go to and put things right, help us to do that. Lord, we thank you that as we pray, build your church, you say, I will build my church. We're so thankful for that. And so, Lord, we we just say in these days, as we are exploring what it means to live in the spirit, that as we're prompted to build and strengthen and encourage one another, Lord, help us to be not those who say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, but help us to be those who who do it today, who turn to one another today, who pick up the phone today, who knock on the door, who pop round, who speak up, speak out, whatever it might be. Help us to be those who are responding out of that life in the spirit. Help us to be forgiving towards one another. Help us to be caring and loving towards one another. Lord God, we thank you that your spirit builds your church in us all this variety of different people. 
And we just honour Mike and Jill, Lord. We thank you for 57 years, Lord God, of walking your way, of choosing. Lord, bless their marriage. Bless their relationship. Lord, you know their children and their grandchildren. Lord, you know the prayers and desires of their heart for different ones across their family. Father, we say, would you answer their prayer according to that passion that they carry? Lord God. Lord God. Lord, thank you. You've placed us into family. I just feel for you as visitors as we close now, even if you're a visitor here today, that you just come in. I just want to, I believe that God would speak to you about the family that he's given you. If you're unsure about where you are at the moment in terms of the local church, I want to encourage you, find a local church where you can belong, where you can be a blessing. And if you have got that already, I want to encourage you, be ready after your break, after your holiday, go back and build. Go back and be a blessing. Go back and strengthen and encourage Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace to us today. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.